Hey, my name is Denise Boudreau Scott, and I am president of Drive. And um, most of my videos don't come with a warning, but this one does. If you have ever worked for me in the past, please shut this video off. Please do me that favor because I'm going to be sharing a couple of things today that I would rather not have you know about my, my dirty little secrets. So um, for those of you continuing on that have not worked with me in the past, um, I want to share with you a little bit about um, my frustration as an administrator, as a leader in the past, and um, some of the things I did to help with that. And I used to be super frustrated as an administrator, um, and I used to think, if only I was a better leader, I wouldn't have to worry so much about uh, my boss breathing down my neck about the numbers for the month. Um, that used to happen a lot. I'd be on these conference calls and he'd be on me. Um, I would think I wouldn't have to answer the phone so much on the weekends if my team was stepping up to the plate more. Um, I would think my team would take care, better care and support pe the people that we cared for even better. Um, and most importantly, I used to think too, gosh, if I was a stronger leader, I would have more, not only time to give, but more energy to give my twin boys um, who were three and uh, four or five years old at the time. And so um, what's being a better leader mean to you? That's what it meant to me, these things I just mentioned. But uh, maybe for you, it means uh, maybe you never worried about getting fired, if that's ever been on your mind. Or maybe when you see your phone, like you pick up your phone and you look at it and it's your boss and you think it's going to be a great conversation. You're not worried about that that conversation would be. Uh, maybe it's more autonomy for you. Um, a promotion, if you want one, whenever you want one, that that's available. Um, maybe it's a bigger bonus. Perhaps it's defying the odds through this whole pandemic and having a great census, great occupancy, um, no problem uh, recruiting team members. So what I dreamed of when I was a leader was someone coming in and telling me each day, here's exactly what you need to do in a good way, a game plan for me, kind of, sort of this step-by-step -step process. Um, and if you feel the same way right now, please know that you are not alone. Um, almost every leader I talk to tells me that, especially now, right now during all this crisis, they would love the ability for someone to say sort of this is the playbook that you, that you need. And here's the thing, uh, typically how you learn to be a leader is by watching others. And I think sometimes, you know, when I first started out, I was watching people and good people, but sometimes it was old school leadership, or sometimes I was working with people who weren't that great of a leader. And I was taking that all on. Um, and a lot of them sort of had this, I'm the boss kind of uh, mentality. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that and what I learned about that, my experience with it in, in just a minute or so. But I want you to know that after you're done with this video, you're going to see exactly what you can do to start becoming the leader that you've always dreamed of. And it's going to take no extra time. That's incredibly important to me that it takes no extra time for you. And it's going to cost you zero dollars. And it's going to bring you closer to that dream of your boss leaving you alone or that promotion that you want or more time with those that you love. Uh, my twin boys, by the way, are 19 now. So it's been a long time since that will happen. And so what you're going to learn also in this video is that unfortunately, most leaders are focused on the wrong thing. And uh, here's one of my things I said, I didn't want everyone knowing, but uh, I've never admitted this publicly, but I was focused on the exact opposite things that I should have been focused when I was first starting out as an administrator as well. And what I was focused on was everyone that worked for me and not in a bad way, right? We should be thinking about the people who work for us, but in my head, I'd be thinking things like, why do they have to come to me for everything, every little thing, right? It's a knock on the door. Or why can't they just know what needs to get done? Why do I have to say it? And I'd be blaming my team members. I'd be blaming the department directors. And I know this is super awful, but sometimes I'd also be blaming my boss or the organization that I worked for, like it was their fault. But I woke up one day and I thought, you know, maybe all those people aren't the problem. And once again, it wasn't like I was a bad, terrible leader, but I was, 
absolutely a frustrated leader. And maybe you can relate to that. And I thought, you know what? Forget about changing everybody else. Maybe a different mindset for me is what I need to start with. So I set out on this quest to figure out what to do. And I read every leadership book I get my hands on. Uh, there's some in the background there, but I have a ton over here too. And there's piles in my house as well as my office. So I read all these books and I took a ton of courses. Um, and over the last 10 years, I've spoken to literally tens of thousands of leaders and staff. And so maybe you're thinking, okay, well, I don't have time for all that, Denise. Uh, I'd like to read books, have no time. I don't have time to take countless classes. I don't have time to talk to all those people. Uh, if you're like me, uh, some days when I was uh, in a leadership role, I would think I barely have time to go to the bathroom, right? I just wanted time to go to the bathroom. I couldn't walk down the hall without someone accosting me. So do not worry because I have done all the hard work for you. So I've taken this best stuff that I've read, that I've learned, that I've experienced myself, as well as in seeing it in all these leaders that I've talked to, and in put into really the system. And so the first step in that system is shifting your mindset about what a boss is. And this was huge for me. This is, I, I had to do this um, for myself as well, because I used to feel like I constantly, um, that I needed to have all the answers that all the solutions to whatever the problem was, was up to me. And that was a huge leadership block for me. I had to know everything because I was the quote unquote boss. And uh, I, may, I hope that I'm not the only one that feels this way. Maybe you've experienced it as well. But it was a ton of pressure on me. It's a ton of pressure on you if you feel the same way. And it's no good for anybody that you work with. So instead, I want you to start to shift that mindset by using a concept that is incredibly simple, but really effective. And it's called tight, loose, tight. And it's by a, a researcher, and I'm gonna butcher his name, but Rune Olvnes, I'm probably saying it wrong, but anyhow, tight, loose, tight. What does that mean? Tight, you make sure that all employees have clear goals that they're clear about the expectation that you have them, whether it's a project or overall goals for the year. It might be one little thing that you're just working on this week, but they're clear about that expectation. And they understand the role that they play in helping the organization achieve that goal. And so what happens is that people kind of step up and take this, have a better sense of accountability, which don't we all want that? And the thing is, if anybody lacks clarity in this first step and the tight piece, the next loose piece is really hard. So what does loose mean? Loose means that you let the people get on with it, do it how they want to do it. Don't insist on doing it your way. And this kind of uh, takes some bravery and us stepping up and saying, okay, they're gonna do it a little bit different than I would do it, but I'm gonna trust in these people. It, it involves you know, really having people empowered to work out the details for themselves. And I'll give you a hint on how you can help to do that at the uh, end of the video as well. Um, and now that they have this big picture, because you've done that tight part in the beginning, right? They can go ahead without you micromanaging them. Because when you micromanage someone, you take away that accountability. And you probably know this, right? When you, I know when I have my boss breathing down my neck, we don't tend to grow as people when we have someone micromanaging us. And the final tight is this, uh, you've probably in the, heard the quote, inspect what you expect. That's exactly what it is. The tight piece is checking within people, but frequently, not just at the end, but along the way. Um, and an important part of this tight piece is really coaching and feedback to individual employees to help them improve how they're doing, to help improve their performance and to reach that goal. And that final tight, right? And that tight, loose tight, that final tight is created really to help that person, the employee, understand if they're on the right track or if he or she is performing at a, maybe even a higher level than you expected. Um, but you're going to be able to show progress towards their goal. So tight, loose, tight makes you really realize that you do not have to have all the answers. And when people feel that they can solve their own problems, you find yourself doing a whole heck of a lot less firefighting. If you ever feel like you come into the office and every day it's like putting out fires and you get that sense like you're running around with a chicken with the head cut off, 
tight, loose tight can help eliminate that. So the, I promised to show you a little bit earlier something else that could help with this, and that is sharing genuine appreciation. So if you are sharing genuine appreciation with people through that process, tight, loose, tight, tight, here's expectation. Here's what I'm expecting of you, uh, um, why I'm expecting it of you. And maybe you're going to share with them, you know what? Sally, I see the ability for you to get other people on board. You're such a, a natural leader in how you were able to kind of cheerlead with people. You stay positive, right? You're going to share some appreciation in that. And that's going to help them with the tight, the loose. You're going to show them you believe in them, checking in, giving them genuine appreciation. And the tight, again, you're going to come back and praise them for what they accomplished. Maybe they didn't even accomplish everything you wanted to, but you can come back with genuine appreciation, at least find part of it that you can call out and appreciate them, um, appreciate them for. So here's the thing, though. Here's the problem with that. Genuine appreciation is really tough to get right. It's probably like the number one issue I hear from staff members, uh, team members is they will share, you know, I, I don't get enough appreciation and the leaders are like, wait, we're appreciating you. So it's way tougher than you realize. That's why on January 20th at three o'clock, I'm going to be teaching a free appreciation masterclass. So free of charge, January 20th, three o'clock Eastern. Um, we're going to be talking about how to give appreciation that works. And when I say we, because I have invited the, I call him the godfather of appreciation, Dr. Paul White, who is a co-author of the book, The Five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace, which has just been a game changer in my life for me, literally life-changing for my family at home as well at work. And uh, we're also going to be talking, uh, Dr. Paul White and I, about encouragement because um, appreciation is a little bit of a look back, right? What's something you did already? How do you encourage them to keep going? And gosh, don't we need that more now than ever? So if you haven't registered for that yet, um, we'll throw the link in so you can register for that class. Um, if you do not want to wait and if you registered for that, you want to wait and you want to learn more about um, other leadership blocks that might be standing in your way, um, and more importantly, what you can do about those leadership blocks. Uh, look for my next email because I'm going to be sharing some more dirty laundry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be sharing a leadership mindset block that kept me constantly busy. When I refer to the putting out fires and the chicken with the head cut off, I could relate. Right? So I'm going to share with you the leadership block that was keeping me in that mentality, keeping me stressed out to the max, and also what you can do about it. Thanks for all that you are doing as a leader in the healthcare field right now. Um, we so need people like you stepping up and doing what you're doing. And I thank you uh, for doing that for your team and the people that you serve. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.